In this lesson, we'll introduce the concept of least squares estimation for identifying an unknown parameter or signal from a measurement or observation in the presence of model uncertainty or noise. Well, let's begin by thinking about the unknown parameter as a vector of values that exist in some parameter space. As a simple example, this parameter might contain only one value, which could be the air temperature in a room. Then we'll think about how the parameter might influence some observations or measurements that we might take. If, for example, the parameter is the air temperature for a room, the observations might be the readings from five thermometers placed in five different positions in the room. And then we'll develop a mathematical model that relates the unknown parameter to the measured observation. If, as another example, we have three elements in the parameter vector and four elements in the observation vector, then the function f will be a function that transforms those three values into four values. Our estimation task, then, is to process the observation x in a way that recovers the unknown parameter alpha as best as we can. In general, we'll think of this as specifying a function g that maps the observation in the measurement space back to the parameter space. Now we'll call this function g our estimator, and we'll call the value alpha hat that it produces for a particular observation the estimate. Now we might be inclined to think of g as the inverse for f, but it's possible that f will not have an inverse. And in most practical situations, there will be measurement or observation noise that will cause the observation to deviate from the value that is predicted by the observation function f. So estimation theory in general is concerned with ways in which we derive and implement the estimator g. Now one way to do this is to determine the parameter vector alpha that minimizes the squared error between the observation x and the predicted value for x that is computed by applying the observation function f to the parameter alpha. Well, that is, we search over all possible parameters and select the one that makes the squared error the smallest between the observation it predicts and the actual observation. Mathematically, we might say then that alpha hat our estimate is the argument that minimizes the squared error subject to any constraints that the parameter space might impose on the parameter. Now in some situations, for example, the parameter space might require that all elements of the parameter vector be non-negative. As an example, let's look at a situation where the parameter is a single value, alpha, and the observation consists of capital N values, each of which is ideally specified by this simple function. That is, the first element of the observation function is equal to alpha, the second is 2 times alpha, the third is 3 times alpha, and in general, the nth is n times alpha. The squared error, then, is the sum of the squares of the differences between the observed values and these predicted values. As an example, Suppose that the observation vector has the values 4, 8, 12, and 16. Now, with a little thought, you can probably see that the value for alpha is 4. The first element is 4, which is 4 times 1. The second would be 4 times 2, or 8. The third is 4 times 3, or 12. And the fourth is 4 times 4, or 16. Now, by plotting the squared error, as a function of alpha for this particular observation, we can see that, as expected, the squared error is minimized for the value of alpha equal 4. And since we're getting a perfect fit, the squared error at this point is equal to 0. We'd say, then, that 4 is the least squares estimate for alpha based on this particular observation. Now let's suppose that the observation has the values 5.3, 10.7, 10.8, 19.9. .9. Now in this case, there's no immediately obvious value for alpha that would make a perfect fit to our observation function. And when we plot the squared error as a function of alpha for this observation, we see that it is minimized at a value of around 4.6. Now in that case, we'd say that alpha equal, say, 4.6 is the least squares estimate for the parameter based on this particular observation. Even though we don't get a perfect fit, we can minimize the squared error. 
Now, in both of these cases, we're evaluating the estimate by explicitly finding the value of the parameter that minimizes the squared error. Ideally, though, we'd like to have a function that we can use to process the observation to produce the estimate. To do that, we might begin by evaluating the derivative of the squared error with respect to the unknown parameter. And that could be written like this. And because we have no constraints on the unknown parameter, we know that the derivative must be equal to zero at the minimum value. And if we select the value for alpha that makes the derivative equal to zero, we get the following function for the estimator. That is, we estimate alpha by dividing the sum of n times xn, or n times each of the observations, the nth observation, by the sum of n squared. And then to verify that this value is a minimum for the squared error rather than a maximum or a point of inflection, we should confirm that the second derivative is positive, which in this case it is. Well, in summary, when we perform least squares estimation for a scalar parameter, we begin by using the observation function f to set up the squared error. Then we identify the value for x that sets the derivative of the parameter to zero provided that this value is inside the constraint set for the parameter. We should then use the second derivative of the squared error to verify that our estimator produces a minimum, rather than a maximum or a point of inflection. And if it does not produce a minimum, we might have to resort to some other methods for solving this least squares estimation problem. In subsequent lessons, we'll extend this approach to the situation for vector parameters.